What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two best friends and two co-hosts, Michael Platt and Mike Bonney. What's going on, guys? What up? How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Just got done uh, setting up the Christmas tree with the family, so put me in a good mood, you know? That's nice. You know, it's a little too early for that, but I wouldn't even get into that. Yeah, about a week too early, but my wife wrapped a ton of Christmas trees that we had no or a ton of Christmas presents and had uh, nowhere to put them, so the tree had to go up. But uh, jumping into some fantasy football talk, uh, the bi- teams on by this week, San Francisco 49ers, New York Giants, Chicago Bears, Buffalo Bills. Guys, get those guys out of your lineups. Uh, jumping into the Thursday night recap, the Seattle Seahawks 28, Arizona Cardinals 21. Pretty uh, pretty good game. Not for fantasy-wise, but watching it, yeah. Uh, DK could have had, had two teddies. He could, yeah, hit him in the face mask. <laughs> Did you see funny. on Twitter? He asked Russ for an apology on Twitter this morning. Who, DK did? Yeah. Why, because he threw it straight uh, at his beak? He, he, he said apologize for that fastball he got. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, Russ Mann uh, was 23-28 for only 197 yards, two touchdowns. But he did Probably run didn't the turn the ball over, though. Yeah, and he d- actually ran the ball 10 times for 42 yards. Ended up with 20 fantasy points. It's a... Uh, Okay, nine for Russell, but you probably expected a little more. That's because mm-hmm. the whole team ran a lot more. Yeah, yeah, and they actually ran well. Yeah, they did. Carlos Hyde had uh, 14 carries for 79 yards and a touchdown. Hopefully you guys uh, sprinted to the waiver wire when you heard he was going to be available last night. 17 and a half fantasy points. Uh, Tyler Lockett, guys, caught... Uh, Nine of nine targets for 67 yards and a touchdown, 21.7 fantasy points. He had a it's a good night from him. And then uh, DK Metcalf, like your boy, only saw five targets. He caught three of them, though, 46 yards and a touchdown. Like we said, should have had a second one, but blasted him in the face mask. <laughs> but it was a pretty pedestrian night from the Seattle offense for the most part. Yeah. Uh, at times, Arizona struggled, too, but uh, Kyler Murray finished 29-42 uh, and 42 for 269 and two touchdowns. Oh, it was weird. Only rushed it uh, five times for 15 yards. Yeah, that's odd. And then uh, and he scored 19 fantasy points. Uh, LaPlan, how do you feel how Kyler did last night? Uh, he was uh, pretty inefficient. He was uh, inaccurate on some intermediate throws, and uh, he looked like uh, Carlos Dunlap, Dunlap uh, was – pressuring him a little bit too he much. played a big part in that defense actually <laughs> he did man it's uh seems like a good uh pickup for the seahawks right now to help anchor that defense a little bit give them a little bit more of a pass rusher than just jamal adams coming mm-hmm. up in the safety position and uh, he's getting can- burned all the time so <laughs> uh kenny drake 11 carries 29 yards wasn't great and ended up falling in the end zone, caught four or five targets for 31 yards. Um, Chase Edmonds didn't really do anything on the ground, though. Two rushes for 13 yards. Um, caught four balls and four targets for 36 yards and a touchdown for almost 15 fantasy points. So that's about what you uh, what you expect out of Chase now with Drake back, or a little higher than you expect, right? Yeah, he's uh, back to that passing down role. Uh, yeah, yeah. They seem to be using him in the slot a little bit more, too. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. That's actually I wish. Where, that's, where, that's where he caught his touchdown at. Yeah. And then uh, DeAndre Hopkins, guys, quiet night from him. Only caught five of eight targets for 51 yards, 10 fantasy points. The guy who loved the, the Cardinals and targets, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, caught eight of 10 balls for 62 yards. Not a bad night, 14 fantasy points. Christian Kirk. I started him in a few different leagues, kind of bummed me out a little bit. Four, uh, caught four balls on six targets for 50 yards. He was playing all on the outside, and it just looked like Kyler was trying to get the ball quick out of his hands, and it was mostly to Larry across the middle in that slot, you know? 
Yeah, it was a weird night with Larry getting 10 targets and uh, Christian Kirk only getting six. Yeah, definitely. And that Dan Arnold guy is not really much to say here besides him just catching the touchdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we can go ahead and jump into some game previews, though, now. The 3 5 and 1 Philadelphia Eagles visit the 6 and 3 Cleveland Browns. Carson Wentz, guys, how you feel this week? Eh? Not great, like I've been feeling about him all year. Yeah, he First stretch so there, he was not a terrible fantasy quarterback because he was getting 20 points for you, but the last two weeks it's been rough for him. Like, really bad. Yeah, it is a good matchup, though. Cleveland uh, has given up the nice most, ninth most fantasy <laughs> points to quarterback per game this season. So he might but be they worried. did. Who'd the Browns play last week? They did pretty well against him, too. Weather. Oh, yeah, that's right. Texans, yeah, yeah. that's true. It's like a 10 to 7 game. Yeah, never mind. Disregard that. (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised if weather's a part of this game again. Uh, I did see the weather is shit, actually. So, uh, it's supposed to rain. It's supposed to rain. Smash the running backs. Yeah, Miles Sanders, guys. He uh, looked pretty good last week. How you feel about him in this matchup this week? Well, if it's raining, I'm starting him no matter what. And I feel... At least somewhat confident he'll get in the end zone. Definitely. Yeah, I, I feel like he's got one of those breakout runs like Boston Scott had last week. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely stole a touchdown from Miles Sanders with that breakout breakup run. I don't know if he stole a touchdown. He kind of earned that touchdown. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he was booking. Uh, then the pass catchers, Travis, Travis Fulgrim, Jalen Rieger, Greg Ward, and uh, guys, Alshon Jeffrey, he's... Uh, He's back, too. How do you feel about these guys this week? Uh, I like Fulgrim. Even he's... Man. Now with everybody back, I don't know if he's necessarily going to be the number one option. I can't um, trust him anymore. Neither can I. I mean, even though it was only one week and it was against the Giants, which is super weird, but I mean, I don't know. With Jalen Rager coming back and then... Ashan Jeffrey, I'm assuming, is going to get some targets. Yeah, once he gets acclimated more into the offense, I would assume Alshon would take away some targets. you agree, LaPlante? Yeah, he might take away some. Uh, honestly, the major culprit is Jalen Rieger. Uh, he took away uh, – well, he, he had seven targets last week. And then, uh, surprisingly, Greg Ward had six, and Fulgrim only had five. I mean, I don't expect that to happen every week. Fulgrim definitely has proven he's the – should be the number one receiver in this uh, offense. Oh, no. Should he, though? The only reason he was doing what he was before is because there, <laughs> everybody was gone. <laughs> You're right. But yeah. He did it against, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Sure, yeah. They're like, it wasn't – I know, mean, anybody could do good if you forced it enough. Yeah, but Maybe. it wasn't against cupcake <laughs> defenses, though. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I think it's Carson <laughs> Wentz me. just getting acclim- acclimated to all his weapons coming back to him because he hasn't had a you know a full cast in a long time. Like, isn't Zach... Two years. <laughs> isn't Zach, like, Zach Ertz even got activated off the IR, I think. I don't think he's playing, but... Nope. Yeah. It's even it's hard to start Dallas Goddard right now too, guys. He uh, I was thinking big things from him once he got activated on IR, but he hasn't uh, hasn't done great. Are you trusting him in this matchup? Not enough to start him, to be honest. I mean, let's be honest though, with the tight ends on bye and tight ends just being shit this year. I mean, in a decent I'd rather match. have the other tight end in this game. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But like you said, if it's raining, I don't want it either. It depends on how bad the rain is. I mean, the tight end might get a little work in the rain, but yeah, it's mostly going to be the running backs. Yeah, definitely. So I can't really say we have a must start on this Eagles team besides <laughs> Miles Sanders. <laughs> Agreed. I feel, I feel like we didn't really help nobody there. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. They haven't been helping anybody this year. <laughs> Uh, but jumping over to the Browns, Baker Mayfield, guys, three out of his last four starts, he has had under 10 fantasy points. A little bit has to do with weather, obviously, and the weather is crappy again, so I'd stay They're going to be running it anyways. you yep. got two great running backs. Yeah. 
They're Billy's both rush defense worthy. is okay, but yeah. Yeah. Chubb came back, looked like he was firing on all cylinders. Yeah. And Kareem Hunt's obviously still there. Chubb ran for 126 yards. Should have two touchdowns. Looked real good, right? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, the play he stepped out, that was a very impressive run. I'm sure yeah. a few fancy people were pissed off. Yeah, yeah you're going to have that. Good football move by him, though. It's a, it's sure, a, yeah. Um, it's a life of balances with Todd Gurley falling in earlier in the year. <laughs> You're definitely starting him as an RB1 this week. And then Kareem Hunt, guys, uh, he had 23 touches last week, even with Nick Chubb in the lineup. That's kind of crazy. And it was 16 fantasy points. Uh, Weather. He, he, he Player starting part him? in that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. It's really hard to take him out, I feel like. I mean, with the running back, you know, landscape, too, it's it is kind of hard. But he's at least flex material running back, too. Yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. He gets a lot um, of volume in this offense. Then the pass catchers, guys, you probably want to avoid all of them. Yep. I, uh, maybe Austin Hooper, Ike, like you said earlier, but Jarvis Landry. Philly's bad against last tight ends. Week, and he burned me, yeah. Uh, I get, Jarvis Landry's lost my trust. I'm not going to be starting him. Anytime. Agreed. So, I won't be starting him. Yeah. LeBlanc, anything to add there? Uh, I, I, I mean, I might agree with you just because, uh, like I said, Philly's not that great at guarding tight ends. Their linebackers stink. Uh, I mean, if there's one passing option and the, if the weather is bad, it's probably going to be Hooper. So, I mean, he might be startable. Hooper, but... Hunt. And then Maybe Chubb. Chubb might get a few catches. I'm thinking just Chubb, Hunt, and Hooper. You're, you're confident yeah. with. Then jumping over to the next game, uh, three and six Atlanta Falcons versus the seven and two New Orleans Saints. Pretty decent matchup for Matt Ryan. Uh, eight out of nine games with thirty five pass attempts. He just throws the ball, man. That's all he does. If you yeah. like volume, like Laplante, this is your guy. <laughs> he's a chucker. Yeah, but I mean, we've seen that he's if. If Julio Jones is in, that's when he's his best. Yeah, yeah, Julio Jones is in, So and he's got Calvin Ridley, guys. How do you feel about Todd Gurley this week? Uh, I'll, t- I'll be the first to tell you, I hate him this week. He uh, he made my sit, uh, the sit part of my start-sit column. Uh, New Orleans, D, hasn't allowed a 100-yard rusher. And I believe they've all, uh, they get, gave up, not very many uh, touchdowns on the ground either. So it's a very You don't tough need 100 to yards Gurley. to be, like, Todd Gurley definitely doesn't need 100 yards to be a top running back this week. I just, I don't know. I just. He's extremely touchdown dependent, is the problem. Like, here, I'm going to. His last three games, Ike. Sorry, his last four 20 attempts, 47 yards. 23 attempts, 63 yards, but two touchdowns. 18 attempts for 46 yards, but a touchdown. 19 attempts, 53 yards, but a touchdown. Michael Plant, how come you don't have this guy on your team? <laughs> <laughs> volume <completely>. beast. <laughs> yeah, but completely inefficient with that volume. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's subcategories in volume, like good volume and bad volume. And I'm going to tell you, you know, that's a bad volume. Yeah, man, it's been gross from him, but he falls into the end zone, so it's been saving his fantasy season. But he's made a career of falling in the end zone. So. Yes, he has. Just from farther distances. But this is a tough matchup, guys. If you get, For me, if you can find a way to put Todd on your bench, I would do so this week. Think about it, you know? Yeah, definitely think about it. I mean, if you uh, don't have a choice, though, you're, you're praying he falls in the end zone. <laughs> yep. Uh, you're starting Julio Jones. Kelvin Ridley, back from injury. You're definitely starting him. How do you guys feel yeah. about Russell Gage? Well, he's useless now if they're all back. I mean... He, well, I wouldn't say useless, but I don't think he's starter worthy. I, I think he's worthy of a flex. Uh, the, the Saints, I mean, for some reason this year, they, they just cannot stop wide receivers from scoring. Uh, I believe they're either tied or second in the league in wide receiver touchdowns scored on them for some reason. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a good chance. Can't that, guard nobody. Yeah, there's a good chance that Russell Gage could, you know. Except Mike Evans. Yeah, I mean, for some reason, just Mike Evans. <laughs> so, I mean, he's I think he's worth a flex, but, I mean, I won't get your hopes too high, but he might get some decent volume in this game. This, this game is uh, 
fifty plus over under, so I mean it could be high scoring. Yeah, agreed. Um, and then Hayden Hurst, guys, uh, four straight games with ten plus fantasy points. That's our threshold we like to talk about, about from the tight ends. Seven plus targets in three out of the four. Three out of four games. How do you feel about him in this matchup? I start him. In fact, I'm starting him in a in a league or two. Yeah. Uh, he is also another beneficiary of uh, Julio Jones being out on the field. Yeah, you were right. What was it, like, almost four weeks ago you said something like that, a little plan. Like, it, when Julio comes in, Hayden Hurst does good things, and it's true. I don't know why. But four yeah, straight games, yeah, 10 posts for Anthony, yeah. I, I wrote it in a Weekly Trends article a couple weeks back. Super it's, weird. It is. It's a weird correlation, but it, it it's happening. You can't deny what's mm-hmm. happening. So, I mean, if Julio's in, you're playing Hayden Hurst. I think, uh, I mean, we want to talk about the this next team and their new starting quarterback, don't you? <laughs> I think Taysom you Hill. want to talk about it. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna let him. I want to talk Taysom about Hill. Him. I want to talk about him starting as a tight end. <laughs> yeah. Taysom Hill, he uh, made my tight end stream article this week, guys. And lucky Start you. at tight end <laughs> in ESPN <laughs> leagues. Uh, Dylan, that was probably your <laughs> easiest tight end filler streamer in this article ever. I mean, he's like only 23% owned, I believe. Well, when it came out... Go ahead. Yeah, when, he, when um, the article came out, it was before we had heard that he was actually going to start at quarterback. Which is Yeah, why did you even put him in there? Because he was going to run the ball still. Uh, he fair. was going <laughs> to catch the ball, maybe. <laughs> but now he's obviously not catching it if he's throwing it. So, uh, you're starting him at tight end, guys. In ESPN, ladies, if you play on there... And apparently he is tight end eligible on FanDuel <laughs> as well. Yes, so I have him in there. So unfortunately, guys, if you want to cash this weekend, you have to have Taysom Hill in your lineup because he's obviously going to be the thing is he's only like forty three hundred. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere on there. Unfortunately, I have to agree. As much as I hate him, uh, I hate <laughs> ESPN and FanDuel for allowing him to be tight end eligible. I agree. Start. Don't be starting him at quarterback, though. I don't feel safe doing that, I feel like. I mean, I think, Mike. I think he has a high enough floor like Cam Cam Newton with his rushing ability to, you know, be at least a high upside QB2 if you're desperate. Yeah, I just – I'm with Ike. You can't trust it, though. I mean – Because what if Jameis comes in after five throws? It's like, well, there, you're done. There might be somebody out there who has Josh Allen on a bye this week that don't have anybody. I mean, that's... Sure. It's a decent matchup. The Falcons are, you know, they're number one in the league. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, allowing QB fantasy points. So, I mean, it's a great mm-hmm. matchup. I mean, Taysom Hill has a high, uh, high, fl- higher floor with his rushing ability. It's um, risky as hell. I'll give you that. Jumping over to the running backs, so Alvin Kamara, stud. We love him on the podcast. Uh, start him. Latavius Murray, maybe a sneaky flex. Depends on Kamara. What the hell is that? Because they feel like they might work or lessen the workload for Kamara. He he had a little bit of an injury this week. So I feel like, I mean, they're going against Atlanta. They don't have to run him wild. Yeah, he was on the injury report. I believe it was uh, Wednesday or Thursday. But then I seen he practiced in full today. They're looking dead in the eye for the playoffs. They cannot lose him. If they lose him before the playoffs, they ain't winning the game. Then uh, Mike Thomas been back for a couple weeks, sucked for a couple weeks. How do you feel about him this week in this real good matchup? Was, you have to start him. I mean, yeah, I was more hopeful with him with Jameis Winston, you know, possibly being the starting quarterback just because he's more prone to chucking it deep. And, you know, Mike Thomas is really good at catching the ball, but with Taysom Hill throwing the ball, I don't know if they're going to be uh-huh. throwing it as much. Oh, Mike Thomas is good at catching the ball, huh? Yeah, he's very good at catching <laughs> the ball. 149 nice receptions last year. Nice evaluation. I love it. He's good. <laughs> uh, Bandy Sanders, guys. I've said it numerous times on the podcast. Stop I hate starting the number him. two receiver in the Saints offense. So don't start him. Ah, look. I mean, One good target good, last so, week. I mean, you got some don't care. If, if you're forced to play him. <laughs> Jared Cook, guys. Uh, I like him this week. Atlanta gives up the... Most uh, points to tight ends in fantasy football. So if you have a mind your rooster, you are starting him. You know, if it wasn't for the Seahawks, the Atlanta would own 
number one category and allowing the most fantasy points to almost every position. The Seahawks, Let them hang out, man. The Seahawks allow the most the wide receivers, unfortunately, so they can't. We can't crown the Falcons yet. Yeah, true. Uh, jumping over to the next game, two six and one Cincinnati Bengals versus the two and seven Washington Football Team, guys. Which could be Washington's name permanently. I don't know if you guys saw that. They might stick. I love with it. it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I want to know uh, what the mascot's gonna be. Fuck. A football. Uh, football. <laughs> football. <laughs> football. I hope they make it a cartoon football with crazy guys. You know, maybe a tongue sticking out. Uh, Joe Burrow, guys. How you feel about him this week? I personally like him. Matthew Stafford torched these guys last week. I'm looking for similar results from Joe, Bur- Joe Burrow. You guys agree or no? Um, probably not as good. I mean, it's not a great matchup. Washington isn't, you know, the best defense. The pass rush definitely gets Not anymore. Good. It's gotten significantly worse. I mean, he this time's had, gone. He's had some bad matchups the past couple weeks and also some bad weather. Plus, they're going to keep getting – I feel like if they keep getting shootouts, it's just you have to start that other quarterback. That, that's my next point. Do you think Alex Smith can get in a shootout? I mean, I know it's a great matchup. But do he was last that? week. I mean, yeah, if he keeps passing it to fucking J.D. McKissick. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to tell you how many targets he's had. Oh, he in, ah. the, in the last uh, two weeks, he leads the league in targets. Yep. <laughs> Well, plant, you're the volume guy, and Burroughs throwing the ball 35 times every game this season because they're playing from behind. Yeah, that defense is like, so bad. Yeah, I don't I like his chances to, to, to put up a good week. week. I, I know Washington has a good defensive line, and the Bengals of offensive line is not so good, but I think Burrow will be able to get it into his playmaker's hands to be able to make some plays. Yeah, the uh, Bengals defense is so bad, and there was a little story out that John Ross was I mean, don't, don't act, act like, like Washington's, Washington's secondary is good or anything, you know what I mean? Right. Like, Landon Land- Land- Collins isn't back there anymore, he's off for the years. Uh, but moving on to Gio Bernard, obviously no Joe Mixon again, guys. Apparently he broke his foot, he just didn't want to tell us. Really? No, I have no idea. I was going to say, you won the record. Uh, how do we feel about you? I genuinely laughed because I thought you were right there. I'm like, I'm like, really? You you believe him, huh? <laughs> I haven't been looking at anything I'm mixing this year because he's basically non-existent. That's your boy, you know, the mixinator. He hasn't been my boy in like three years. Mm-hmm. People don't forget. He won me a championship. That's good enough for me. Good enough. For Answer the question now, somebody. Gio Bernard. What about him? Start. Sit. This is our sit podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. just, you start him as you're starting him. As volume, but you're not happy because this Washington defense is good against the run. So you should get some targets in the passing game. That's where he's going to get his value this week. The pass catchers in the offense. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, A.J. Green, Drew Sample. Why'd you just say A.J. Green and Drew Sample? I mean, you could have... Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. How do you guys feel about it? <laughs> You could have maybe said, you could have said like AJ. I mean, I mean the green. He he hasn't earned that part yet this year. Start them both. Yep. Agreed. Uh, jumping over to the the football team. Football. Football. Alex Smith. Play football. Streamer this week. Streamer this week or no? Yeah. yeah. Not a confident one, but yeah, you could probably plug him in, and he might get you a solid floor against this terrible, terrible defense. I agree. I like him more than Taysom Hill at quarterback. At quarterback. Not at tight end, obviously. If he has to keep throwing it, man. And he, they um, they if, might be playing for behind this game. Yeah, yeah just, more than likely. Alex Smith, isn't, he hasn't scored a touchdown. They keep getting in the red zone. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's throwing the ball, but he's not getting touchdowns. Yeah. How do you feel about the running backs? I mean, Antonio Gibson had three straight games. Right <laughs> three straight games with a touchdown, twelve plus fantasy points. 
Ice boy JD McKissick, 29 targets last two weeks. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Seven plus fantasy points in each. He's a must start, in my opinion. Okay. As live as that. I agree. Quarterback. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I love both these running backs in this offense in good matchups like this one. Uh, I mean, even last week when they had a good matchup, they moved it up and down the field on the Lions and Antonio Gibson. I mean, he didn't get a lot of volume because of McKissick, but he still scored two touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. And then the I think that's three straight games for him, right? Yeah. Antonio Gibson? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then McKissick's going to get all the passing volume. And it, um, I'll be honest with you, if it ain't McKissick, it's McLaurin, and that's the only three I want. Yep. You don't even want Logan Thomas this week, huh? Oh, actually, three Logan Thomas for a streaming game. tight end might not be bad. Yeah, three out of four last games with 10-plus fantasy points, guys. That's our threshold, and he's doing a good job. Yep. Now Smith loves his tight ends. Loves them. Travis Kelsey, Jordan Reed. He's always worked good with them. Um, jumping over to the next game, four and five Detroit Lions versus the three and seven Carolina Panthers. Matthew Stafford, guy, has been a disappointment this year. How do you like him in this matchup? I don't think he's going to be 100% healthy. I think his – isn't his thumb broken or, or something like that? You There's a – he did something to it. I forgot what it was. But Give me one if second. He, if he can't throw it, I mean, I'm not very confident. And plus, uh, Kenny G, uh, he's supposed to he, – he was ruled out, so, I mean – and yeah, ligament injury in his right thumb. Yeah, guys, uh, if you could avoid Stafford, please do. Are you well, like I just said, DeAndre Swift's out as well, unfortunately, after he looked phenomenal last week. That's another reason uh, why. Adrian Peterson, carry on Johnson. You started one of them this week no. in this matchup? No. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who? What one are you gonna pick? Adrian Peterson. No, why? I wouldn't be surprised if he gets 20 carries. Matthew he Stafford's, probably Matthew Ew, Stafford's and do what with it? Matthew Stafford's hand is injured. Carolina Panthers are terrible at stopping the run. They've been selling out on stopping the pass all year. And 20 I just, rushes for 54 yards. I, like I, I Michael Plant <laughs> kind of guy. I just... I, <laughs> he's not going to get any passing work. I think that'll probably fall down on Carrion Johnson. But I don't... I think this will be a barn burner game. And I think it'll... You know, it's going to favor Peterson, especially if they get fall down in the end zone. And I don't, guys, I, the pass catchers, I don't really want to start any of them with Matthew Stafford's thumb being banged up. And uh, you, if you wasted a lot of fab on Marvin Jones, I guess you probably would you probably want should. to play him. Yeah, right. Three straight games with a touchdown, but you're not thrilled about it. Uh, yeah, you're not. You're as thrilled about it as if uh, you drafted Kenny Galladay this year in the first round. I mean. I, I, I know you did it, Dylan. You're probably not happy. Not in the first round, you asshole. As my number one wide receiver. I mean. Yeah, that's your boy, man. What happened to him? He got hurt. I'm supposed to predict injuries now, douchebags, or what? I thought you were. I thought you would. I mean, oh, okay. We expect <laughs> yeah. to predict weather. I mean, why can't you predict true. injuries? Is that so much to ask? Come on. I don't have an injury radar like they have a Doppler radar. Boom. Mad er. Science. <laughs> 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 TJ Hawkinson, <Hines. laughs> guys. I know he just said he don't Sorry, like obvious, edges, sorry. But tight end suck. He does not suck. So start TJ. <laughs> yeah, he's he's clearly a part of this offense. Yeah. Uh, Teddy, uh, jumping over to the Panthers, guys. Teddy doesn't sound like he's playing. And I'm drawing a blank on the starting quarterback's name. Uh, it's either B.J. Walker or Will Greer. B.J. Walker, that's absolutely who it is. Your boy <laughs> Will Greer, man. No, they're actually saying Teddy might play. I don't believe you. Somebody check that. I'm on sleeper right now, and it says, it's best left on benches this week he's dealing with a knee injury and is considered questionable to play. He should be able to suit up. Game time decision, though. Interesting. Stay away, though, guys. Yeah, my guess yeah. would be P.J. Walker would be his backup. And either way, stay away. Who you shouldn't stay away from, guys. Mike Davis. Four what? Oh, guys, the Lions' rush defense is horrid. Horrid. Yeah, that's with, fine at all. With Teddy, I mean, no, with Teddy being injured, they're going to want to run the ball, man. Mike Davis Don't be surprised if we get under 10 fantasy points again. 
Yeah, 20 for like, what, 50 yards? There ain't no chance under 20, under 10 fantasy points unless he gets injured, pal. Yeah, Not we'll see. this week. We'll see. Uh, LaPlante, how do you feel about the pass catchers while I look something up? Well, I mean, the whole reason why Mike Davis hasn't been performing either, and let me chime in on that, is because he hasn't been getting the same amount of targets he's been getting. He's only got five targets and six targets the last, couple, last two weeks. I mean, and then you got Robbie Anderson. Has 19 targets, and Curtis Samuel has 14 targets, along with, you know, uh, stealing his rushing attempts. They seem to be using Curtis Samuel as a gadget player, and he's been stealing a lot of the red zone works. I mean, Mike Davis has been vultured out of some touchdowns this year, but he has a good matchup. He's going to have the volume. The only thing I'd be afraid about is the stack box. I don't like a lot of the guys this week, man. Unfortunately, with Teddy being out or hurt, it hurts a lot of the value. I feel like it's going to hurt more Robbie Anderson. Towards Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore, for sure. I mean, even Curtis Samuel in the pass game, but they might involve him more in the run game, then, if that's the case. I'm just not impressed with Mike Davis as a running back at all, so we'll have to prove me wrong. It's a good matchup for him. Good matchup for him. It is probably one of his better matchups. He has not had the greatest matchups as of... uh, No, definitely not. But, uh, I mean, you got anything on the pass catchers, or you got that? You found that? No, I'm ready to move on. What's the next uh, jump it over to to the next game: the nine and zero Pittsburgh Steelers against the one and eight Jacksonville Jaguars. How you feel about Ben in this? He's a starter. Hey, he's been a QB one the past three or four weeks, I believe. Unfortunately, I don't know if he's going to have to do much. I mean, with James Conner only having uh, two straight games with less than 10 fantasy points, it seems like <laughs> he's been struggling. So, I mean, if they can't run the ball, I mean, they got three healthy receivers. Yeah, I know. Good luck stopping those guys, yeah, I man. Mean, Holy cow. And it's not even like Ben's throwing it deep. He's just kind of like picking apart defenses underneath like yeah. he was in New England a couple years ago or even last year. But uh, being that said, I like all three pass catchers uh, in this game against the Jaguars. Uh, Juju Smith, I mean, solid wide receiver, too. He's had four straight games with 13 plus fantasy points. Two would. He's definitely a must start now. Yeah, he's been. He's definitely gotten integrated back into this offense. I mean. Yeah, now that's humming. And then, uh, I mean, because Juju's kind of retained his Juju role in this offense, Deontay Johnson's kind of got the Antonio Brown in this. Antonio Brown role in this offense. I mean, 10 plus targets in three of the last four games. I mean, your only worry is if he can stay on the field. Right. <laughs> I mean, even Chase Claypool is getting targets, man. How do you, I mean, who, who do you feel is uh, out of these three, like, uh, is going to be the highest scoring one this week if you had to choose? Um, I know it's a tough decision because they're probably all going to get solid. Probably players. Juju. How about you, Dill? Uh, probably Deontay Johnson because I'm facing him in multiple leagues this week. <laughs> I mean, that's solid logic. <laughs> uh, they're just going to, my two cents is they're just going to have to uh, do it early in this game because they should be blowing out the Jaguars pretty early. Yeah, uh, and with that, uh, I see this game being a blowout too. I wouldn't be surprised if Chase Claypool is the highest scoring one. I'll, I'll, I'll split the vote right. down the middle just because they love, <laughs> they love to use him in those gadget plays around the goal line. If they if they get a butt, big play busted out and they you know someone falls down on the one yard line, I mean I, I wouldn't be surprised if they run a, end around to Claypool. Definitely. How about Eric? Then Eric you, yep, go on. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Take <laughs> us through. Take us through the play. Uh, Eric Ebron, I mean, you're, I mean, it's not sexy, but you're starting him. I mean, there's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense, but, uh, three of the last four games, he's had 10 plus fantasy points, and that is the magic number. Hell yeah. But, that one out of those four games was last week, and he only had five points. I mean, I expect a bounce back week with this, uh, solid matchup. How about you guys? Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's going to be a blowout, so I... They got to do it early in the game. True. All right, but, uh, I mean, is this true? Is Gardner Minshew actually questionable? Yeah, he's questionable. It doesn't really sound like he's playing. 
but yeah, I, I would plan for another Jake Lutton start. Uh, obviously, I mean, I'm gonna avoid him this week. I, I'm gonna get, say you guys are too. Kind of want to avoid everybody. Even <laughs> even the red hot James Robinson. Uh, if you can, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like they're gonna, they're not gonna be able to run the ball. His usage at the passing game has got started to go down. They're starting to use Dare Gubawale a bit more in the passing game, which he hasn't looked very good in. But no, he's got a dropper or two last week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I would... Robinson has looked really good this year, obviously, he's but I just don't volume. think he's gonna. Eat, uh, but I don't see the volume this week because they're gonna be down. That's why I don't see True. much more than fifteen, much more than fifteen carries, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and at that, at that point, you're hoping he falls into the end zone because he's not getting involved in the passing game. Yeah, I see. If I mean, if they do get in the red zone, I see him being the guy that's going to be getting the carries. It's just going to be tough trying to. Get oh, for sure. This defense. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you're probably only. I mean, even DJ Chark, I mean, you're not confident at all, but he might be a decent wide receiver three this week. He's seen seven targets in three of the last four games. But like we said, the matchup's not great. No, definitely not. So, so we will move on uh, to the next game because obviously you don't really want to start Keelan Cole. I mean, if you have to, you have to. Go ahead. Or Tyler Eifert. I mean, I'm starting him in a one league, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> So the next, I wouldn't be. No, it's not fun. <laughs> but uh, the next game is the six and three Tennessee Titans at the uh, six and three Baltimore Ravens. I want to say this is gonna be a game of the week, but the way the Titans have been playing, losing uh, was it four, uh, three out of their last four games. Uh, but Baltimore Ravens are also struggling, so I mean, this could be a shit show game of the week. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Tannehill, the way he's been his teams. <laughs> yeah. Tannehill, the way he's been throwing lately, I mean, risky, avoid him. The risky start, probably best to avoid if there's other options out there. I mean, he's got a terrible matchup in the Baltimore Ravens. They have been a little bit, you know, down because of, uh, you know, the COVID shit going on with Marlon Humphrey and whatnot, but they should be back to full strength this week. Derrick Henry, obvious start. You know, lower expectations. Yep. Good defense, but you're starting him with the amount of volume he's getting. AJ Brown, though, I mean, I mean, you're starting him. How do you guys feel about his, uh, you know, fantasy outlook this week? Temper expectations probably going to be lined up with Marcus Peters. I'm going to guess he might see a little bit of Marlon Humphrey, but I know Marlon Humphrey uh, works a little more in the slot. But uh, you're starting AJ Brown if you have a just yeah you wide have, yeah two wide receiver three this week somewhere in there. Are you worried he's going to have another week like he did last week? Only one catch? You know? I mean, yep. it, it, it could happen, yeah. But uh, it, he's never going to get a, a crazy amount of targets. So he what he does with the catches is big. He needs mm -hmm. to get a big play or a touchdown or something like that. Yeah, because the volume's not always going to be there for the teams. Right. What, what do they want to try to do if their whole game plan is working? They're trying to run the ball down your fucking yep. throat with Derrick Henry. Yeah, they run, 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 then play action pass. Yep, exactly, exactly. And Corey Davis seems to be a Tannehill favorite, man. Yeah, I don't know why. I I, I think it has something He's to do with maybe A.J. Brown taking number one coverage, too. I, th I think Corey Davis is talented, though, too, guys. Oh, yeah, he was worry. obviously – he was a first-round pick. He was a top pick for a reason. Yeah, he was – Mark shit-ass Marcus Mariota was just throwing him the ball for a while <laughs> and – you know, Ryan Tannehill and A.J. Brown worked together last year, um, working with the second team reps, obviously, until Tannehill took over. And then A.J. Brown exploded on the scene when Tannehill took over. But, yeah, Corey Davis has been real solid this year. Only one game under 10 fantasy points. I think it was a goose egg, actually. It was, against the Bears. Yeah, another, player, yeah. Uh, another guy who started off pretty solid this year, but he's kind of simmered down lately. It's Johnny Smith. I mean, are you com are you comfortable starting him this week? That was a good segue, LaPlante. But no, I'm not. No. Yeah. He is my uh, sick guy this week in the for the tight ends in my sick column. He uh eight targets in the last two games, guys. Uh, what was it? Uh, I should have the stat pulled up, but I don't. I want to say he hasn't caught any more than two passes since week four. 
Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's ridiculous. It's brutal. And I'm pretty sure those two passes were both in the red zone, which is kind of even more brutal. He's he's kind of taking that Mike Evans role if they get in the red zone, kind of. But sorry guys, it was week five. He caught five or se- he had caught five balls in week five. Then one, one, two, two, and two. Ugh. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, not great for Johnny anymore. Yeah, I mean, he's he's not reaching that threshold. We like at ten points. I mean. Guys, better not still be starring him. Whoever it is is kind of wild. Yeah, there's. You pro- there's, yeah. there's this options. isn't just an outlier. This is a trend now. It's like, yeah, no, you're mm-hmm. not getting enough targets at all. Yeah, you know, go out, you know. Maybe, maybe you could find more targets on the waiver wire, like a Logan Thomas or something, guys. Hell, you could you could find more passing attempts on the waiver wire with like Taysom Hill. <laughs> Any ESPN. <laughs> Any ESPN. Uh. But we'll move on to the Ravens then. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he uh, has had back-to-back games with two touchdown passes. Uh, you like to see it, but he has. I still like to see him be better. Yeah, he's not lived up to expectations or uh, draft position this year, where he's been drafted in probably the early <coughs> second round to mid-second round picks. Mm. But you're rolling him out there in, in hopes that uh, he uh, can get back on track. I kind of wonder what Desmond King will do to the Tennessee Titans defense. I know it's one player, but he played last week, right? Yeah, he was the one uh, that the touchdown on. Uh, yeah. Well, Harris. look at that. He made a somewhat difference then. I mean, all mm-hmm. he did was pick up the fumble. He didn't force it, but yeah. Hey. Right place, right. He's game. there. <laughs> he he's absolutely gonna help stabilize stabilize the back end of that defense yes. for sure because they've bit. been boot they've been booty. A little bit, but the major part with this defense was the pass rush. They haven't really been pressuring the quarterback. I mean, that's I a- like Lamar in this matchup, though. If there is any game for Lamar to bounce back, it's this one. Yeah. To be honest, because Tennessee's been getting beat up all season. I mean, he's coming into a stretch of good matchups. So, I mean, you'd like to see him heating up with the two. Yeah, guys. this is when he should start figuring it out. Well, he plays the Colts next week, so then you have to simmer down expectations. But after that. Expect him to explode if they're um, still a full go trying to push for the one or two seed in the AFC, even though the one seed's kind of might be out of question now. They're three. They better start winning these games, man. If they lose another one, uh, it's looking dicey. Of them uh, not making the playoffs at some point because they're obviously not winning the division with the Steelers being undefeated still. Yeah, I think uh, one of the. Don't the Ravens have Steelers in two weeks? Or is that a little bit later? Maybe the, no, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They play the Steelers again next week. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, because okay. that doesn't make sense. They wouldn't fucking play the Colts again, Dylan. <laughs> idiot. They're not in their division. My bad. I'm glad you reprimanded yourself, so I didn't. Have yeah. To do it. Oh, you know me. Definitely reprimand myself. <laughs> but uh, I, I honestly think one of the reasons why you know Lamar's been struggling is because John Harbaugh cannot decide which running back he wants to use. I mean. Now that Mark Ingram's back, I mean, gets even worse. It's a shit show. I don't know. Like we've seen this backfield over and over again, week in and week out. I mean, even with even if they want to just run a committee with Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, it's looked better than having Mark Ingram out there. I don't. Understand. And even with those two, they're both still not startable because they just aren't getting enough. I don't know. They're not getting enough touches. It's annoying. J.K. Dobbins is clearly the better back. He pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, but with Mark Ingram back in the picture, I would avoid all three. I think all three are droppable until an injury arises. How about you guys? I'm keeping J.K. Dobbins on my roster, even though yeah. I'm mad, mad at him. But, yeah, he's probably the only guy I want. I mean, if you're desperate, I think they're worth dropping. But if you can hold him for a roster spot, I mean, yeah, absolutely. He's definitely... Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean... Edwards isn't a bad guy either, obviously, because he gets in the end zone and he gets 10-plus carries every game, but that nothing with, more than a bench piece. That was with Mark Ingram out, though, now that Mark Ingram's in there. Yeah, the rolls again. That's, yeah that's it's not great. Part. And bye weeks are almost over, so yeah, you're right, LaPlante, he's probably droppable, too. Yeah, but uh, someone who's kind of teetering on the droppable lines, I mean, Hollywood. He's around. droppable. He's droppable. You, you, yeah. You've jumped ship with him? He's bad, man. I mean, well, yeah. well, he's not a bad football player, but for some reason he's just bad in fantasy. 
Yeah, it's it's a combination of, you know, the lack of volume in this offense and Lamar Jackson yeah. not playing that great this year. It's Their awesome. schedule eases up, like we said, but... So yeah, I wouldn't held, drop him. If you've held on to him for the so long, don't drop him, but he's droppable, guys. He's, yeah, if you have to he, make a tough I'm decision. Saying? Yeah, if you have to make, like I just said, a tough decision, he he you can drop it. Yeah, if you're trying to push off for a uh, push for a playoff spot and you've been kind of riding his coat his his shitty coattails all year, I mean, there might be a better option on the waiver wire. Yeah, yep. Uh someone you're Michael def- Pittman. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, even Michael Pittman would be better than this next person, Willie Sneed. I know he keeps popping out of nowhere with these 15 plus fantasy games uh, <laughs> not trustworthy enough man you know, was, he gets even less volume than marquise brown's you know minimal volume so we're gonna avoid him miles boykin avoid uh mark andrews i mean i kind of want to say avoid but I mean, he's 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 the one guy at pass catcher i'll start New, it was weird last week. New England was letting Mark Andrews do whatever he want. They were like funneling everything to the middle of the field to just let Lamar dink it and dump it. And Mark Andrews was on the the good end of that, having thirteen fantasy points last yeah, week. If it wasn't for that, I mean, I mean, he just had fantasy points, which is nice, but that was the first time since week five. I mean, yeah, brutal. It is brutal. I mean. And you drafted him in the third, fourth round, somewhere in there. Yuck. Thinking he'd be a top five tight yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal, but uh, that's all I want to talk about with tight ends this week. Or all year, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you want to move on to this next game? Uh, talk about some tight ends. To look at this game, man. New England. Uh, this Texas is where the stars come out, man. Some stud tight ends here. <laughs> this, game, <laughs> this might be a studly game. Who knows? We got the four and five New England. If you aren't feeling froggy on Devin Asiasi, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm feeling, That's what I'm talking about. I'm feeling froggy <laughs> trying to pronounce his name. Uh, the four and five New England Patriots at the two and seven Houston Texans. Uh, we got Cam Newton. <laughs> I mean, he's always a risky start week in and week out, but uh, I, I've had this conversation with you guys off off the podcast. I mean, he's got a high floor with his rushing. Ability. I don't like this offense, no, just this, to be honest. This offense so I don't want anybody. I mean, oh man, I, what about Damian Harris? I mean, no, this is a great this is a great match. I don't trust him enough. It is a good matchup. It, it, for both sure. of these guys, it's a good matchup. But uh, there's also Rex Burkhead, James White. <laughs> And Cam Newton running the ball before, as much as him. Yeah, I think the only uh, two I'm confident in, in this offense would probably be Cam and Damian. I mean, like yeah, I would say if anybody, if anybody, Jacoby Myers. Yeah, he's uh, Jacoby's played real good the last uh, few weeks, but it's like Belichick has figured out that he needs to protect Cam from himself, and they're just <laughs> yeah, trying. True. They're just trying to. Uh, Run the ball down the. Cam just throws, won't listen, guys. man. Yeah, he, uh, he's played a little better. They, they he hasn't. Thro- he hasn't him thrown him an inter. He hasn't thrown an interception. I don't think since uh, the two <laughs> games after COVID. I, so. But you want to hear something fucked up? I I heard on a different podcast that he's on pace this year for only twenty five hundred passing yards <laughs> and five yeah. passing touchdowns. That's nice. Yeah, but I do want to throw in there, Ike, to give you a little more on Damian Harris. Every time he's had 15 carries, which is uh, three games, he's had uh, over. He's gained over 100 yards. Hey, he's good. Did you learn that he's from a good, my weekly trend he's article? Good. I learned that from my Start Sit article, actually, while I was doing it. Yeah, uh, suck it, yeah. plant. You must have copied it because my uh, Start Sit our, uh, my weekly trend article was like. That's blue a blue but uh, last uh, four, four weeks, weeks for him, 5.8 yards, 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 yards per carry, 6.4 yards per carry, 5.1 yards per carry, 5.5 yards per carry. He's I just, just still don't, don't trust him enough. For, he's, I, like, he's, he's been, been doing good. good but, yeah, yeah, he's, he's just, just the most talented in that backfield. Sure. sure. Yeah. I want him to just sh- give, give him 20, 20 carries, Bill. Bill. Give him 20 carries, you cheater. Yeah, he's got all the time, but not all the opportunity, it's looking like. It's frustrating. Sorry, Sorry move, move on. on. Move on. Ike, if you, you want to talk about Jacoby Myers, you I don't, don't really. I can just say he said four straight games of 10 plus fantasy points. He's number one guy. So yeah, he's Cam's number he's one. He's terrible. I mean, he's, he's wide receiver flex, uh, wide receiver three flex territory. I mean, he's earned that the past couple weeks. 
If you had, hold on, if you had to choose at the flex spot between Damian Harris or Jacoby Myers, what one would you pick? In this game script against the Houston Texans, they've... Uh, Damian Harris. Yeah, I'd probably... In this game? No, I'm, it, what? I don't... You, I, 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 did, did you, you listen, listen to anything, anything I just, I just told you? you? I did. Trying to protect Cam from himself. They're okay, that's, that's fine. But if the Texans go up by at least 10 to 10, 17 points, which could happen, Damian Harris becomes non-existent. I don't see it, dog, because he's Why? so bad. Look at what Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb just did to that defense on the ground. I know the Patriots defense is just as bad, though. It's going to be high scoring. Not necessarily with the the pace of play that Bill wants to run with this offense. Right, I mean, that's what, what I'm trying to do. Will he be able to control this game? Because Houston's, Houston's not good is the problem. problem. I, I get, get what you're saying, Mike, that, that they could get up, but I don't trust them either because they're not good. I trust Deshaun and Will Fuller enough to make a difference in the game. Fantasy-wise, not in real football, I don't think, unfortunately, because their defense can't stop. Nothing, Nothing either. either. I mean, and New England's defense did. A lot of defense can't stop anything, anything this year. Well, New England, I mean, showed a little bit of a little bit of uh, going in the right direction last week when they stopped Lamar. I mean, the weather did have a, a factor in it, but I mean, they are kind of turning the corner a little bit. I mean, I who the the New England Patriots defense? I mean, oh, okay, yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't say their offense is definitely turning a corner. That's not true. No. no. But with Stefan Gilmore healthy, he's going to be shadowing Will Fuller. I, I, he's, he's playing this week? If he's playing. I, I'm not sure. He's, he's been, been banged up for a while. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if he is playing, uh, I, I definitely downgrade Will Fuller to wide receiver two. I mean. We're definitely We're spending a lot of time, time on this shit offense. Uh, that's why I'm transitioning to this uh, Houston Texans offense. Uh Deshaun Watson, you're starting him, obviously, because you drafted him real early this week. He's, and he's been pretty decent up until going against the Browns. Uh, yeah, yeah, ton, ton of volume. volume. Yeah. yeah, ton of volume. Yep. I did just look up stuff on Gilmore. He is questionable, but he said he expects to play. So I would downgrade Will <laughs> on that. Uh, and I would upgrade Brandon Cooks to probably a wide receiver, too, this week, because uh, both of them have been wide receiver, I mean, one options in this offense. Would you agree? I like them both. You like Will Fuller this week against uh Yep. yep. It's not bad. He, he hasn't scared. Stefan hasn't really scared me much. He hasn't scared anybody, anybody this year. All right. I mean, I'm, I we don't have to bet, but I'm going to definitely take Brandon Cooks this week over Will Fuller. I'll, I'll go against the grain against you guys. But uh, Randall Cobb, you're avoiding. Uh, this you're is the guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I really want to go on a limb, I'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you're avoiding him. And then, obviously, like, we skipped over the Patriots' tight end position. Where... You skipped over Duke, Duke Johnson, Johnson, too, by the way. I mean, he didn't, nice have, leader. he didn't have a very solid week last week in a good matchup. It's true, but he's still probably a flex starter yeah. based off value alone. Yeah, he, he's... I, just I just don't think, think he's very good. good. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, he's... Clearly. <laughs> There's a reason why he doesn't get... A lot of work. The number, number one. Where he goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean. He's, he's just a guy. With David Johnson out. And I'm and just a guy. Yeah, weeks, I mean, he's, he's worth a, a flex plug-in or an RB2 plug-in if you're desperate. Yeah, yeah way, way too, too much, much time, time in that game. game. Go to the yeah, yeah, what, what the fork, fork man? <laughs> we got the Worst game, game on, on the slate. Uh, Except for maybe this one. Bad hosting, I guess. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. All right, we might have a worse game coming up after this game, so uh, <laughs> just keep talking. Six and three, Miami Dolphins versus the uh, three and six Denver Broncos. Check, Check your watch. watch. I mean, it, it hasn't, hasn't changed. changed. It still, it still says, says two of time. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say it says two plus defense time. I mean, this defense has been definitely stepping it up with two. Yeah, it's Brian, Brian Flores, coach of the year. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, two is a risky start, though. He, he hasn't really impressed me in his couple of starts, but he's been doing just Whoa. Like, what? like, like fantasy-wise or, wise or just in, fantasy like, all together? Okay, okay, I was, was going to say. I mean, NFL-wise, I mean, he's been game-managing. It's nothing more. That's, that's all they need him to do. do. Exactly. And yeah, for, him, exactly. for being a rookie, he's doing just fine. Is that for a first-round pick impressing you? The fact that he hasn't thrown, thrown a pick yet is pretty impressive. I mean, I would give him his decision-making and his game-managing is very good, but I mean, he's not wowing you like Justin Herbert or even, I mean, Joe Burrow at the start of the year. 
I mean, he's doing just well, those guys haven't necessarily, necessarily wowed anybody except for throwing a lot. I mean, maybe, maybe Herbert, yes, but Joe Burrow just the guy who throws a lot. I mean, you're telling me if you switch Joe Burrow and Tua, uh, Tua would be able to be six and three on the Bengals. No, I think he'd throw just as much as Joe Burrow and look just like him. But would he be just as efficient? Yeah. Probably, Probably more efficient. And we'll save that argument for a different day. We'll uh, go to the surprise in this offense with Matt Breida being injured and Miles Gaskin being on IR. Salman Ahmed, uh, 16 fantasy points last week. It seems like the Dolphins like to have a workhorse running back. And until their injuries clear up, this is the guy. He got 21 carries for 85 yards and a touchdown last week. He's worth a flex play or a running back to play this week. You guys think so, too? Yeah, yeah if, if you're, you're struggling, struggling at the running back position or struggling at the flex spot, spot go, go ahead, throw him in there. He might get you <coughs> probably anywhere from 8 to 12 points or so. Bring it might be into the work a little bit this week, but. Yeah, uh. I'll tell you, somebody who's uh, getting some work eaten out of him, that's Devontae Parker. I mean, he's not hes not been as solid as he was with Ryan Fitzpatrick earlier in the year. I mean, you guys trusted him this week against the Denver Broncos defense? Uh, trust is a strong word. <laughs> uh, probably flex, wide receiver three-ish. He's definitely boomer bust. You're definitely like hoping boom. for a boom. Tua likes Jakeem Grant, I feel. He does. Unfortunately for Devontae Parker owners, but you can't really trust Jakeem in your lineup yet either. I, yeah, I'll be honest. I'm not really trusting any pass catcher in this until there's more clarity. I agree. So uh, that includes the tight ends, Durham Smythe and Adam Shaheen and Mike Jasicki, because for some reason all three of them are relevant in this offense. Not fancy relevant. Uh, That's why I just said offense. <laughs> but uh, we'll move on to the next team then. Drew Locke, uh, he's questionable this week. I mean, I yeah, ribs, ribs not looking, looking good. good. I, I mean, it looking good that he'll play, but ugh. I would have oh, anything to do with any of it. Yeah, I would have probably yeah, avoided him this week. This isn't a good like game. literally this whole offense. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you had to start a running back, though, out of Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay, who are you starting this week? Uh, can, can I say either? No. Why Melvin Gordon, Gordon, I guess. And it's bad, man. Why, Why can't, can't I tell, tell someone to pick up someone, someone different than both of them? They might not have that option. <laughs> because <laughs> Melvin Gordon has been bad. I'd, I'd rather start Salman and Ahmad than both these guys. I agree. <laughs> I, I understand that, but the question was out of these two. It's just out of a confidence level who we thought maybe would be shit a question. Question. have a better game. I, I would, would say pick the waiver wire. wire. There's not running back depth out there, guys, with four people, four teams. Why is Devin might, might be out there. out there? I mean, he might be, but it, somebody might I like him more than I like him more than Melvin like Gordon. Sorry. Uh, Jerry, Judy, guys, three straight games with 10 plus fantasy points. He's, uh, I don't really like it in this matchup, especially if with Locke banged up and ripped it. Judy's banged up, too. Yeah, it's, uh, not looking good. Don't like Tim Patrick. Katie nope. Hamler's been involved in the offense last week, or the last few weeks. 10 plus tires in each of the last two games. Uh, yeah. Good still going on. Yeah, don't, pu- don't play him either. <laughs> no fan, he's banged up. Shocker, like always, battling an ankle injury, but tight end position. Keep starting him away. Start, start, start. I'm not confident in Fant until he shows that he can, you know, play through a full game. But if yeah, tight end sucks. So if you have to start, him, another play. terrible game coming, coming up, guys. <laughs> I told you, we got the 0-9 Jets against the 2-7 Los Angeles Chargers. Jamison Crowder. And, and that's, that's it, guys. Yes, we should talk about. We should talk about what. Do we want to talk about what crazy ass Gay said? Honestly, I want to talk about Bashar Perriman with Joe Flacco starting instead of Sam Darnold. He's had he had two touchdowns last week. Joe Flacco is willing to throw the ball, and Perriman's a deep threat in this offense. I mean, I think he's worth a flex play with with Crowder. All right, I'm not going to say anything about that. That's fine. Uh, well, Michael P. Ryan said he's going to get more involved, but. 
take, take it for what Gay says. says. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that just means God, I hate that game. That just means Gore is going to go. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about uh, the Los Angeles. Which, Which I mean, I mean even... t- 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 Today, Junior. <laughs> they only have, I, do I do like, like Cannibal Lodge actually a little bit this week. I mean, do you yeah, like, man, do you wash your mouth, mouth out. Do you like I Justin can't believe I just said it. Do, do you like <laughs> Justin Herbert's haircut, though? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but as Ultimate, a fan, fade away from, from him now. <laughs> he looks stupid. Yeah, he looks stupid. He looks like a 16 year old gamer. Yeah, yeah he does. does. But you're starting him against this terrible matchup. Uh huh. And, uh, oh, he lost all of his fantasy skill when he cut his hair. It's all gone. gone. No more quarterbacking skill. It's like Space Jam, his talent just got sucked. You know? <laughs> yeah. But like I said, Kalen Balaj, I mean, I kind of like him this week too. I mean, you got a possible revenge game against the Really Jordan. ugly to say. Austin Eckler on IR. You know, you got uh, Justin Jackson on IR. Joshua Kelly is who he is. Garbage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's looking like Kalen Balaj. I mean, a little bit of Tr- Tremaine Pope sprinkled in there, but Kalen Balaj getting the majority of the work. Yep. 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 Solid matchup. And he's a plug-and-play this week and probably only matchup dependent here on out. But Keenan Allen, obvious start. Sure. Yeah, no questions asked. Mike Williams, though, a little, little questionable with him. Uh, great matchup this week, but do you trust him to boom this week? Dude, always, always boom or bust, man. Yeah, yeah you, you can't, you can't, can't trust, trust Mike Williams, Williams ever. No, no I, I would, would not, not feel great, great with him in my lineup. lineup. No, I mean, you're not confident, I mean, just because he's boom or bust. But with a great matchup, are you a little bit more leaning towards boom this week or bust this week? Boom, I guess. All right, I'm, I'd have to agree with you. Uh one guy, he's going to pop up, I swear to God, just watch. But Jalen Guyton, avoid, <laughs> avoid him uh, unless you want to get him. It will be Guyton, it's going to be some random dude they have, like as a six-string wire receiver who busts loose. And it's going to be like, oh, is this guy pick up, uh, worth picking up? No. No, none of them are. <laughs> Mike Williams is the only one that's he's low-end. But after that, I mean, Hunter Henry, he's he's even a low-end tight end. Oh, boy, how do you feel about him, man? Yeah. <laughs> He's frustrating, but six so, uh, targets in three last four games and touchdown last week. First time. Try to get him. Try to get him the ball. He's just not super efficient, man. Agree. This seems to be a running theme on this podcast. Still, still, guys letting him down this this year. Chris <laughs> Brown, Kenny Galladay, Hunter Henry. Hunter. <laughs> How, how about uh, Delvin Cook, Cook, guys? He, he let, let me down, down too, or no? No, he, I mean every blind squirrel finds a nut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll move on to the next game then. Uh, I can't wait to talk about, about this game. game. This one I'm actually scared of being a Packer fan. We got the 7-2 and Packers against the 6-3 uh, and three Colts. This is going to be their toughest game probably down the stretch because they actually have a decent you know, stretch of games. But this one is going to be a tough one. Are you guys confident with starting Aaron Rodgers against this tough? <laughs> you have to be starting him, but hell no! I would, I would not, not be surprised if he had one of his first games. Tough, tough defense. defense. Honestly, my opinion, being a Packer fan, 50-50 shot. It's either going to be a game like the Bucks, or it's going to be a game like the Jags, where he's going to be able to throw it. It's, <laughs> but you're starting him either way, I guess. Uh, Aaron Jones. I mean. Again, terrible matchup. You have to start him. He probably could get a lot of receiving work. I mean, yeah, with the pressure that the Colts bring, wouldn't be shocked if he has a six to eight reception game. Jamal Williams, I mean, he's gotten some work. He kind of like that Kareem Hunt in this offense role. You know, I mean, if you guys know what I mean. Uh, but Just to a lesser extent, yeah. yeah. Uh, but with this matchup, uh, I'd sit him. Yeah. Uh, Devontae Adams, though, he was listed with an injury, but he's clear to go. Uh, yeah, he's, he's good. Yeah, real good. But uh, I down, I, I temper expectations with this defense. I mean, he's obviously going to get the red zone looks, but I don't know if he's going to have that 150. Okay, yards. Ten targets again. Yeah, I just don't know if it's going to equate to 150 yards this uh, this week. It's decent defense, but uh, I fucking hate him. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Uh, you're sitting him this week, I'm guessing. You can never trust to start him. He'll some. I, I don't want him on my team to be honest. So he's probably best on the bench, unless you're in a deep league where you can just throw him in there. 
Yeah, Dylan. Bad any, ball leagues. Any, any words, Dylan? Nope. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I am gonna take a little bit of offense to this because you uh, guys didn't even list Alan Lazard here. He is questionable for the game against Sunday. Uh, uh, he's still bailing his core injury. He's not coming back. I mean, he he's. This is questionable, which means he's more likely to play than not. One shot to his he's done again. Yeah, I'm not going to argue. They'll take it easy with him. But and it's your medical expertise. expertise like. <laughs> if, I, I will say this. If starts, I would start him over Scantling. Sure. <laughs> but Bob Tanyan. Eh. I mean, no. He had that great one game. and then he's Avoid him. Yeah, he's. Tough defense. I mean, I'd rather Logan Thomas. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's all we'll talk about him because uh, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, and Aaron Rodgers are the only ones that are comparable in this matchup. So the Colts, Philip Rivers. I know he's been kind of doing good lately, but this is a decent pass defense with the Packers, and their rush defense is terrible. So I'm guessing they're going to lean more on the run game, which. John Taylor breakout game. You, saying it now. How many times have people been saying this, though? Like, This is the first time I'm saying it. I've never been a fan of Jonathan Taylor this whole year, but I think he will break out this game. No, no I'm just saying in general, how many times have been people saying that all time this year? I don't care what other people have been saying. I'm saying this is my first time. It, it, I just I don't trust him personally. He's had good matchups against the Lions. Uh, he, he didn't do crap. I mean... But, so, Ike's answering my next question, then, if you guys trust Naheem Hines over Jonathan Taylor this week. Nope, go on Taylor this week. How in the world can you guys trust either of these three? We talked about this last week. I'm I'm confident with my guy this week. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to do very good against this horrible rush defense, which will make Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins – become non-existent for the week. Uh, what better week than to get Jonathan Taylor going, you know? If it's a, I if don't it's know, a man. out game, Jonathan Taylor might be the beneficiary. If it's a shootout, Naheem Hines might see more work in the pass game because it's clear that they don't want to use Jonathan Taylor in the pass game. I don't know what we're betting, Mike, but I will take Mike Davis over Jonathan Taylor this week. Oh, we're betting, man. We <laughs> are betting. <laughs> We'll figure it out. All right. Well, yep. let's just – you guys can figure out the terms of the deal later. Uh, we'll just talk about it. who has the most points this week. We'll make it nice and simple. Uh, Taylor and Davis. Yes. So, move on to the receiver, T.Y. Hilton. Bench him. Only one yeah. over 10 fantasy points this year. I mean, everyone thought he was going to be the key I mean, to Philip Rivers, but it's obvious he's not. You drop him. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I like Pitman, guys. Sure. I mean, yeah, he has been uh, seven straight tar- seven targets, two straight games. He's Phil got, likes him. He's he's got he some spooky volume there with some gadget plays, getting his touchdowns. Like he's he's getting the volume in the past game, but he's really not showing out with touchdowns. So I mean, he's he's a low volume. I mean, uh, high volume wide receiver three. Not a wide receiver three flex, I'd say. I mean. Wide receiver three flex are kind of the same thing in my opinion, but uh, Zach Pascal. Your opinion's wrong. Except they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Pascal, avoid. <laughs> we burn, avoid. Mo Alley almost said what Dylan put on there. <laughs> avoid. <laughs> <laughs> same with Jack. Same with Jack Doyle being questionable. Avoid. So we'll move on to this next game. Another uh, possible shit show game. Two and seven Dallas oh Cowboys. What's with these games this week? At the four and five Minnesota Vikings. The Red Rocket. Uh, he could be I would wait till you see what he can do again. He's back. Uh, he's back, but I don't trust him. Minnesota's defense has been pretty decent the past couple weeks. They, they've, they've been hot winning the past four games. Uh, you're sitting him. Same, I mean, I don't know. You're not you almost, Did you Zeke. almost just say sit Zeke? I mean, You're not sitting Zeke. You can't sit Zeke, I'm sorry, but he might he might do bad for you. He's a wide receiver just the two. Risk you have to take. Wide receiver two-ish. Right back two. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you trusted any of the pass catchers to play? Oh, I mean, I, 
I want to. I want you to answer this question. If you guys are so confident, Elliot, who would you rather have this week? We're not. We're not comfortable. Oh, we're, I'm nowhere near confident. <laughs> you know, like you're not taking it by your starting line. Well, I, you guys gave me shit because you could find better options on the waiver wire. How about Salman Ahmed? Would you start Salman oh. Ahmed over Zeke? So we no. compared Zeke to who? Who did we even see? <laughs> Melvin You're Gordon. Silly, <laughs> no chance. Sit down, man. Come on. Move <laughs> on. Uh, you guys can think of what you want, but Ellie, it's been bad ever since that has been gone. I'll Same tell you, I'm Cooper. starting over Zeke, though, as Delvin Cook. That's for sure in this game, man. Yeah, great analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give me some more great analysis on, uh, analysis on Amari Cooper if uh, Andy Dalton starts? You starting him then? Yeah. yeah. Hey, he's I love it. it. But, but yeah. you don't love it, but you're starting him. Uh, you're not starting anybody <laughs> else in the offense, though. I guess nah. Schultz. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prime time now. Prime time now. So there you guys. Yeah. Murray Cooper, and that is it. So uh, we'll move on to the next team. Kirk Cousins, I mean, you think he's worth a stream this week against this Cowboys defense? Yeah. I, good matchup. Both. I mean, he Brian gave the Bears the business. What if he throws it 15 times? Because Delvin Cook <laughs> runs it through totally 250. And hey, that's well, the thing. Why, is, why, why do you keep saying Delvin Cook's good? Just <laughs> drop <laughs> and throw a hammer at people. That's <laughs> <laughs> speaking into existence. <laughs> oh, man. He's trying to not have another guy in the line on a disappointment this year. Watch him run for like 10, 10 rushes for like 29 yards. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be wild. All right, but if uh, if they, you know, do throw more than 15 times, uh, we got Adam Thielen who's uh, showing out. He had two touchdowns last week against the Bears, and then uh, yeah, Justin Jefferson had a hundred. He's good. Uh, yeah, he's he's good. He had, you know, I think that was his third or fourth 100-yard uh, receiving game this year. I like him. I, I think, think he's pretty good. good. I just, just don't. He needs to get more targets consistently. <laughs> Hey, he's, They're not there. I know, it sucks. Uh, he's, this offense is like the Ravens. Your boy, Devin Cook's taking, taking everything. Yes, he is. Mm. And with that being mm. said, <laughs> Cal Rudolph and Irv Smith, uh, they're definitely avoidable with this offense. Yes, they are. So, I mean, you can start feeling with wide receiver two confidence with all his red zone targets he gets. And then Justin Jefferson, I mean, he just eats up yards. So, I mean, he's, he's a boomer bust flex. We'll move on to uh, the next game, and this game might be better than what it what it seems, just because the Raiders pulled off the upset last time they played. We got the eight one Kansas City Chiefs and six and three Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, but they fucked up last time. Raiders are a solid football team. Though. They did a victory lap around Arrowhead. When they won in Week Five, so I have a feeling the Chiefs are going to be coming out. Super pissed off. Yeah, but that's just an opinion, and like we learned earlier, <laughs> opinions are wrong. So, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, obvious start. See, are you referring to your opinion on wide receiver three being the same as a flex? Because your wide receiver three position is not the same as flex position, guy, if that's what you're going with. Same <laughs> and isn't this whole thing <laughs> that we're doing is based off opinion? So then why are you shitting on mine? Because <laughs> you just said wide receiver <laughs> three and flex are the same thing when all when what I'm doing is talking about actual fantasy players. I'm saying the positional value is about the same thing. I mean, would you no. say a flex is the same no. positional value as a RB two or a wide You could put like in Dylan's case a guy who is probably projected as a wide receiver one or two like Mike Davis in your flex. Yeah, that's if you have the options. But okay, okay, moving on, on guys. Let's wrap this up. Uh, CEH, uh, low-end RB2. One game under uh, 10 fantasy points this uh, year. And he's got volume even with Bell being there, but he's still eating into that volume. So, I mean... Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, with that being said, we're avoiding Le'Veon Bell because he's... Yes, he stinks. Yeah, he's washed. He's pointless. He's washed is what he is. But with the Raiders' pass defense not being great, Tyreek Hill is a obvious start this week. Uh, he's probably going to get at least one big touchdown play. 
But Sammy Watkins, there's uh, news of him playing this week. I mean, sneaky flex, maybe? Could be interesting. These are the type of games, for some reason, that you'll see, like, Sammy Watkins go for seven for 100 and a touchdown for no apparent reason. I know we're starting him in our league. We're doing it together, right? Hell yeah. Because our team sucks, but <laughs> you're not thrilled to start him if you are. Yep. Uh, you're not thrilled if you're starting to Marcus Robinson or Will <laughs> Hardman either. So For the love of God, hopefully you're not. You are thrilled if you're starting Kelsey, though. Yeah, you're thrilled that he's back from bye this week. Uh, he's Unfortunately, he will not be tight end that won this week in ESPN. <laughs> that will be Taysom Hill. But, yeah. Uh, 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 I will forever be salty about that. <laughs> So we'll move on to the next team because there's no more talk about Kelsey. He's obvious start every fucking week. Uh, Derek Carr sneakily, sneakily been playing really good NFL ball, but he's yes, not that great. Been playing very good at all. Not that great in fantasy this year. I mean, this don't week, need to be if you if you're winning games, games, I guess. That's true. Uh, he's had three straight games under 15 fantasy points. Uh, I mean, you you do have a positive. He did have three touchdown passes uh, against Kansas City last time they played, but that was kind of an outlier game. I don't know if it will be as high scoring like this. And uh, a player that definitely benefits on this team winning, Josh Jacobs. Uh, if if you, don't, you guys don't see them winning this, winning this game, do you think Josh Jacobs is going to be that great this week? I still, I, he'll still get you around at least 10 plus points, but I don't think he's going to be booming on you against these guys. No, probably not. Yeah, he's coming off a, a big week of two touchdowns and big fantasy week. I just don't see it against this team again. Uh, and uh, another reason why is because Devontae Booker's kind of eating into his value a little bit, but uh, I mean. I I think it's probably because Jacobs is banged up a bit, so they're trying to take a little bit of the work Maybe. off of him. Yeah, if that's true, I mean, I just, I just want to – I I think that Devontae Booker might have reached a handcuff uh, potential possibility with the amount of volume Josh Jacobs gets in this offense, but that's mm-hmm. that's only if anything serious happens. But uh, Henry Ruggs, since he's come back from injury, he has not been stellar. Uh, he's had – one good game this year. I mean, and he's only had a couple, couple catches. catches. Uh, he's he's boomer bust like a lot of receivers this year. Uh, Nelson Aguilar though, I mean, he has been doing definitely well boomer bust. <laughs> he's less boomer bust than Henry Ruggs though. He's he's oh for he's, sure. He always. I think you have a better chance of Nelson Aguilar catching a long play this uh, this week. I mean, yeah. he did he did have one against the Chiefs. Last time when they played, uh, but it's just the receiver core is tough, except for Darren Waller. Yeah, he's he's the number one option in this offense for sure, uh, and because of that, people like Hunter Renfro and Aguilar, and they they definitely do not have good weeks. So with that being said, Josh Jacobs, you're starting. Darren Waller, you're starting, and Derek Carr. I mean, you're probably sitting. We'll move on to the last game. Monday Night Football. This one might be a good one. I mean, I don't know if it'll be good for fantasy, but it'll be a good NFL game. Six it might three. not be a good fantasy game. No, it might not. 6-3 and three Los Angeles Rams against the 7-3 and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jared Goff. Uh, set him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buccaneers defense no, is no joke. I know they kind of faltered against Drew Brees, but... Goff has been playing fancy, good, Goff good fancy lately. Uh, I was going to say Goff is, isn't even near Drew Brees either, so I mean, there's not much uh, positivity there. <laughs> Running back is not much best. positivity in the back either. Uh, no, I mean, Daryl Henderson got most of the work, but Malcolm Bryan got the two touchdowns. I mean, Cam Akers, not even a part of this offense. I mean, <laughs> he will be next year maybe. This is the Ravens' backfield 2.0. Yep. But, uh, I mean, if you had to pick one, choose one. Between, Between the next? Yeah. Daryl Henderson. Henderson. Make it quick. Yeah, just. I mean, Daryl. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd go Darrow as well. I mean, we'll move on then to the wide receivers. Robert Woods. I mean, he's had a solid floor this year. Is he's definitely regressed back to the mean with getting his touchdowns this year. Mm. But two of the last three games under ten fantasy points. I mean, you think he could maybe? He has a tough matchup this week. He's got Carlton Davis more than likely. Yeah, so that might be a solid day for Robert Woods. But I, I think he drafted him pretty high, fifth, fourth, fifth round. Yeah. You're, you're not letting him leave your lineup. Yeah. What well, I do want to talk about, though, a little bit, guys, is Josh Reynolds having uh, more targets than Robert Woods the last three weeks, too. Eight targets a week. More consistent, too. Nine targets a week, eight hit the bye week, week nine, and then saw ten targets while catching eight of them for 94 yards last week. 17 fantasy points. He might be a sneaky flex play. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. He really might be. If he's seeing this sort of volume. Right. Yeah. I mean, Plus, there's, there's no way he's drawing the top coverages in this defense. He's definitely gained some chemistry with Jared Goff, too. I mean. Yeah. Yes, he is. So, I can, I can agree. He's definitely a sneaky flex play this week, possibly. I just not a great matchup, so you probably temper your expectations. Please avoid the tight ends. Yeah. Tight ends suck this year, guys. It's, it's just so demoralizing to talk about them. But Tyler Higby, avoid six straight games under 10 fantasy points. Gerald Everett, avoid still <laughs> two of the last three games under 10 fantasy points. They just... They suck. But uh, Tom Brady, he's uh, got a tough matchup against this Rams defense. Uh, Aaron Donald might be breathing down his neck. I'd be scared to start him. Yeah, we've seen that if uh, you can get pressure on Tom Brady. like the Saints, Especially out the middle. Yeah, uh, That's exa- exactly right. If he sees, Brady's one of the worst quarterbacks in the league while facing pressure this season. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's why. why he, sorry, Mike. That's why he made the sit part of my start sit art. Yeah, that's why I don't want the pass catchers either, except for maybe Godwin. Yeah, if Aaron Donald gets pressure on him, I I do not like Tom Brady this week. If they can figure out some way to stop Aaron Donald, Tom Brady might have fringe QB one potential, just because it's Tom Brady. Mm, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, we'll move on to the running backs then. Uh, Ronald Jones, great week last week. 23 carries, 192 yards, one touchdown, but 98 of those yards came on his uh, 98-yard touchdown run. It's a cool play, but it did take up over half of his yards. Still he not fought, No, he fumbled last week, too. We were all talking in Slack that he wasn't going to see the ball anymore, and then Bruce Arians does what Bruce Arians does and shocks everyone and yep. just gave him the ball still. After whatever he'd make a mistake before, he'd yank him. But for some reason, he uh, kept him in this time. And he just destroyed it the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, he's. This seems to be a backfield of trending running backs week in and week out. And Ronald Jones is definitely the one trending up. Uh, but it's not promising. He only seen 59% of the snap share. That's not that much. But it beat out Leonard Fournette. So I'm going to have to lean Ronald Jones this week if you're going to be starting any, anyone out of this backfield over Fournette. I, I trend away from Fournette until he shows more volume. But uh, talking about a guy who doesn't get a lot of volume, Mike Evans, low-end wide receiver two this week, probably is going to have Jalen Ramsey shadowing him, at least at the start of the game. Uh, did you guys know that his longest catch on the year is only 22 yards? That's so crazy, man. Especially with him being a big play threat when James was there, you know? Uh, it's Tom Brady, just he ain't chucking it like James did. I mean, he's definitely a lot more accurate. I'll give him that. But uh, Mike Evans, you're not happy with the Ramsey coverage. I mean, he might he might switch over to Chris Godwin if Chris Godwin starts lighting it up. I don't know. I don't know how this defense is going to go, but I definitely think he's going to start out on Mike Evans. With that being said, Chris Godwin is definitely a high upside uh, wide receiver two this week. Probably the one guy I like. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I I like Antonio Brown too. I think he's he last two weeks he's second on the team at targets thirteen. I mean, 
tied with Mike Evans uh, with 10 receptions the past two weeks, too. They're clearly trying to get him involved. Oh, yeah. But, so, I mean, but those are the only two I feel confident in. I mean, Chris Godwin, last, his last three games, 18 receptions, 221 receiving yards, and a touchdown. So, I mean, those are the two guys I'd be targeting in this offense this week. Also, Rob Gronkowski. He's probably a lock-in at tight end this year for the rest of the year. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's second most targeted. Not the re- yeah, he's yeah, second, go. second most targeted guy in this offense, believe it or not, behind Mike Evans. I mean, yeah, he's, he's uh, tight end involved in this offense, so we're going to be starting him. Camera break, though, you fade him. He's only got 15 targets in seven games. Not nearly what you need. Obviously. No. Yeah, not good. <laughs> Brown, Brown is definitely taken out of his target share. But uh, that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, Dylan, you want to take us out? Uh, yeah, guys. Uh, as always, we appreciate, appreciate you listening. Please subscribe uh, to the YouTube uh, channel, the Fantasy Six Pack channel. Uh, please follow me uh, on Twitter at dclemens2222. You can catch my two articles I do every week, the tight end streaming article and the start sit article over at fantasysixpack.net. Little plant, go ahead. Uh, you can find my weekly trend article uh, every Monday. Uh, my Twitter handle is at be like underscore Mike with two eyes. Go ahead, Ike. I do the injury impact article, and you can follow me at Ike two one two one. Appreciate you guys listening. We'll talk to you next week. Peace. Good luck.